Hello, I'm Dr. Carlo Karendang, and I'm a psychiatrist. Today, I will answer a question about why use an SNRI for anxiety disorder if norepinephrine is stimulating? Well, to answer your question, SNRIs, also known as serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors, are antidepressants which affect both serotonin and norepinephrine. So these SNRIs, which include Effexor, also known as venlafaxine, or Cymbalta, also known as duloxetine, these SNRIs increase both serotonin and norepinephrine in the synapse in your central nervous system by blocking the reuptake of serotonin and blocking the reuptake of norepinephrine so that you have increases of both of these neurotransmitters in the synapses. However, for anxiety disorder, the question is, why are SNRIs effective for anxiety disorders as SNRIs increase both serotonin and norepinephrine? And it is true that norepinephrine is stimulating. So to answer your questions, the reason why SNRIs are effective for anxiety disorders is that it has the reason is is that SNRIs are effective for anxiety disorders because of their effect on serotonin and not necessarily because of their effects on norepinephrine. So if you look at the fear circuits in the brain, so when your brain perceives fear or when it, it is perceives stress or anxiety, what happens is is that the fear circuits then senses this so at the middle of your fear circuits, the central part of the fear circuit is a part of the brain called the amygdala. So the amygdala then becomes activated when it senses stress, fear, or danger. So the amygdala then becomes activated and this kicks in the fear circuits that it's connected to, it kicks it into overdrive. So what you have then are these overactive fear circuits centered on the amygdala and it's overactive when you encounter stress, when you are stressed or when you encounter a threat or danger or when you are stressed and, or anxious. So what happens is then the amygdala then sets off what's called the fight or flight response. So this, the, the amygdala then sets off the sympathetic nervous system via the locus ceruleus, which is another part of the brain. So the locus ceruleus sets off the sympathetic nervous system and the sympathetic nervous system then directly innervates organs such as the heart and the blood vessels. So the sympathetic nervous system when it's activated then it increases your heart rate and it constricts your blood vessels so that you can direct blood to the places where it's needed, like the skeletal muscles for the fight or flight response. So the body is preparing then to either fight the threat or to run from it. So in order to do this, the fight or flight response then prepares your body to become stronger, faster, and your brain to become more focused on addressing the danger at hand. So this happens actually quite quickly it's a it's a reflex so it happens almost instantaneously when you encounter a threat or when you're stressed that this fight or flight response is activated centered on the amygdala triggering the sympathetic nervous system which then leads to increased heart rate and also diversion of blood to the places that's needed away from the digestive system and reproductive system which you don't need right away to the systems that are needed to fight such as your muscles and your brain and your vision so also when the sympathetic nervous system is activated in addition to directly innervating organs such as the heart to make it beat faster and make blood flow faster to the places where it's needed the sympathetic nervous system also innervates the adrenal glands so the adrenal medulla so the adrenal glands are located on top of your kidneys. So what happens is that the, the sympathetic nervous system activates the adrenal cortex. So, I mean, the adrenal medulla. 
So the adrenal glands are made of the adrenal cortex, which is the outer part of the adrenal glands, and the adrenal medulla, which is the inner part of the adrenal glands. So the sympathetic nervous system innervates the adrenal glands and it activates the adrenal medulla, the inner part of the adrenal glands, to secrete adrenaline. So this adrenaline then comes back and also works. It, it gets dumped into the bloodstream. So this is a hormone, a stress hormone. It gets dumped into the bloodstream from the adrenal glands that's set off by the sympathetic nervous system. And it also then reinforces, it goes, travels to the heart and makes the heart beat faster. It travels to your lungs and it dilates your bronch, your your air sac so that you can get more oxygen to your lungs so that you can get more oxygen going to your muscles and your brain so that you can fight or flee from the danger so and it also makes you sweat so these are some of the things that adrenaline can do and in addition the the amygdala also activates the in addition to activating the sympathetic nervous system it also activates what's called the HPA axis, also known as the hypothalamic pituitary adreno. The, uh, let me say this again. It's called the HPA axis, called the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. So this HPA axis then, what happens is the, the amygdala then signals to the hypothalamus and the hypothalamus then secretes what's called corticotropin releasing factor, which is also called CRF. And this CRF is a hormone that's released and it's released into the blood and it travels to directly to the pituitary gland and the pituitary gland in turn, when it receives the CRH, the CRF, I mean. So when the pituitary gland receives the CRF, the pituitary gland then secretes what's called ACTH also known as adrenocorticotrophic adrenocorticotrophic hormone. So this is called ACTH. So the ACTH is a hormone then it's dumped into the bloodstream from the pituitary, then it travels all the way down to the adrenal glands, and the ACTH then activates the adrenal cortex, which is the outer part of the adrenal of the adrenal glands, and it triggers the ACA, the ACTH triggers the adrenal cortex to secrete more stress hormones and this time this is cortisol. So the adrenal cortex then secretes cortisol and this cortisol what it does it's another stress hormone but it does other things to help you survive and deal with the threat and danger and cortisol one of the things it does is that it helps to increase blood glucose blood glucose to your to your bloodstream. So you need the blood glucose, the blood glucose, as fuel, so that it could be provided to your muscles and to your brain as fuel to fight the danger. So you, it's like it's so once the cortisol is released, it then inc massively increases the influx of blood glucose into your bloodstream, and this provides the fuel that then is the. Um, this is the fuel you need then to fight off the danger or to run from it. Another thing that cortisol does is that it actually suppresses the immune system. Um, and one of the things is that the immune system is not needed right away when you are fighting a danger because that's more of a longer term um, body function. So, so as you see, this, fear, this fight or flight response, it prepares your body to deal with the danger right away and it only focuses on the systems that you need to fight the danger right then and there and to divert resources away from things you don't need like your immune system or from your digestive system or your reproductive system because you're not going to digest anything or reproduce or fight off an infection if you're not alive anymore. So it diverts all, the fight or flight response diverts all of your resources to your muscles, to your brain, to your breathing, to your, to your heart, heart rate, to your blood um, flowing to those important systems so that you can survive basically is the name of the game. So, And also the stress hormones that are 
that are triggered by the sympathetic nervous system and by the HPA axis, the stress hormones then, they're dumped into the bloodstream and they actually, in addition to its direct effects on the body, it also travels back up to the brain. The stress hormones travel back up to the brain and it also then feeds back into the fear circuit centered on the amygdala and it further mediates the stress response, the fight or flight response to further help you to survive the threat and to, to uh, further modify your survival response. So what I'm trying to say is, is that the, so this is the neurobiology behind the behind anxiety disorders because anxiety disorders are based on the amygdala which then triggers this fight or flight response so this is when you have anxiety all the physical symptoms that you feel are from this fight or flight response where you have muscle tension your heart beats faster you're short of breath um, you you have butterflies in your stomach you have lump in your throat you have tunnel vision and so so these are you might have nausea or vomiting so these are the physical symptoms that you feel when you have anxiety that's brought on by the fight or flight response. So let's get back to the original question. So why does an SNRI work for anxiety disorder? Well, um, an SNRI works for anxiety disorders because it affects serotonin. So serotonin is increased by both SNRIs and also SSRIs, which are called selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, such as Zoloft, which is also called sertraline, or Prozac, which is also called fluoxetine. So SSRIs and SNRIs, they both work on anxiety disorders by increasing serotonin. So how is this? How does this occur that increasing serotonin then decreases anxiety? Well, the answer to this is that if you look further into the neurobiology of anxiety disorders and those fear circuits, you see that there are serotonergic, serotonin neurons that actually project from the, from the brainstem, part of the brainstem called the raphi, raphi nuclei. So from the raphi nuclei, you have serotonin neurons that project from there and directly innervates, directly connects then to the amygdala. So again, you have serotonergic neurons that project from the raphi nuclei, nuclei centered in the brainstem, and it projects to the amygdala. So what happens then is that when you take an SNRI or an SSRI, what happens is that it travels to the serotonergic neurons that's based in the raphi, raphi nuclei in the brainstem and the SNRI then blocks the reuptake of serotonin into the serotonergic neurons. So what happens is, is that it basically increases serotonin at the end of these neurons which project to the amygdala. And what's interesting is that serotonin has an inhibitory effect on the amygdala. So when you ingest an SNRI or an SSRI, you then increase the serotonin in the synapse. So the serotonergic neurons that go from the raphi nuclei to the amygdala, it increases the serotonin that goes to the amygdala and this then puts the brakes on the amygdala and inhibits the amygdala and then this then calms down the amygdala and therefore calms down the fear circuits. So when you calm down the amygdala and calm down your fear circuits by increasing serotonin from taking an SNRI or an SSRI, what happens is that you have less of a fight or flight response because your amygdala and your fear circuits are, are no longer on overdrive because of the inhibitory effects from serotonin that's caused by, um, that's caused, an increase of serotonin which is caused by the SNRI or the SSRI that you take. So this is why an SSRI and an SNRI are effective 
For treating anxiety disorders, it's because of their effects on serotonin and serotonin thereby has inhibitory effects on the amygdala, which then calms down your amygdala and your fear circuits, and therefore this is why it treats your anxiety disorder as you no longer have the fight or flight response. So, but you're right about, on the second part of your question, you're right that norepinephrine does, does have a, um, it's an act, norepinephrine does activate you and actually makes you more anxious. So here's a case example, here's an example. So when you further look at the neurobiology of anxiety disorders, the when the amygdala triggers the locus ceruleus, which then trigger, triggers the sympathetic nervous system, what's ha what happens is, is that the, the sympathetic nervous system then innervates various organs such as the heart. So at the end, so the sympathetic nervous system, when it is when it is activated and triggered, the neurotransmitter that's released from the sympathetic nervous system that is based on the locus ceruleus in your brain, when the sympathetic nervous system is activated, then it actually the sympathetic nerves releases norepinephrine, which is a neurotransmitter. And this norepinephrine then travels the thing travels to the heart, and it actually makes the heart beat faster, stronger. And so what happens is that norepinephrine is released from the sympathetic nervous system in response to the amygdala being activated from the fear response. And what happens is there's such a massive activation of the sympathetic nervous system that much of the norepinephrine that gets released into the synapse then actually spills over and travels to the bloodstream and then it gets into your blood and then it also um, then acts as a hormone and it has similar effects as the adrenaline that's spilled into the bloodstream that's actually released from the adrenal glands that's actually um, triggered by the sympathetic nervous system. So what I'm saying is, is that norepinephrine is stimulating so if you increase norepinephrine, then it will lead to an anxiety response because it stimulate, it's stimulating because this is what the sympathetic nervous system does. It uses norepinephrine as its neurotransmitter and much of it spills over into the bloodstream and causes panic type of symptoms, physical anxiety symptoms. Um, so if you wanna block the effects of norepinephrine and adrenaline, and adrenaline what you do then is then you can use things such as beta blockers, such as propanolol. So beta blockers such as propanolol can block the effects of norepinephrine and epinephrine, which is also known as adrenaline, and then block the effects of the norepinephrine so that you no longer get the physical symptoms of anxiety, such as increased heart rate and sweating, trembling, voice quivering. So all the things, all the physical symptoms of anxiety that you would get from an increase of norepinephrine. So that's to answer your second part of your question, but to answer the first part of your question, SS, SNRIs, why they're effective for, for anxiety is because of their effect on serotonin and really has nothing to do with norepinephrine. So if you want to actually block the effects of norepinephrine from the anxiety response, then you can also use beta blockers such as propanolol to block norepinephrine binding to norepinephrine receptors which leads to more anxiety. So I hope this answers your question. I'm Dr. Carlo Carandang. Thank you for listening.